Hi, my name is Caitlin Didier, and today I'll be showing you how to do a vector cell notation to find the polarity of molecules. First, I'm going to read some very basic definitions that you need to know. The first is bond polarity, which is a separation of charge which is measured by its dipole. Dipole moment is the measure of net molecular polarity, which tells us about the charge separation in a molecule. A dipole is two charges separated by a distance, and the electronegativity is a measure of the tendency of an atom to attract a bonding pair of electrons. So if a molecule has um, very high, or an atom has very high electronegativity, um, a lot greater than another, that's how we get an ionic bond because that one atom would hog all the electrons, um, leaving a great electronegativity um, difference, which means there's a huge dipole moment, and that's how we get an ionic bond. So in order to figure out the bond polarity um, and whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar, you have to know what the electronegativity of an atom is. So you can look up an electronegativity chart on the internet or in your book, but the basic rule is that it increases towards fluorine. So you can just kind of picture everything increasing towards fluorine and electronegativity like this. However, there is a case where boron is um, less than hydrogen, so that is an exception. Um, so knowing that, I can do an example in the case of water. So H2O. has a bit notation like this. And so we draw an arrow like this with the plus sign over the less electronegative atom. And the arrow goes towards the more electronegative atom. So we would do that here as well because we know oxygen is closer to fluorine and hydrogen is. So if we do a vector sum, um, which is a head to tail method, we would take either this one or this one to start with, it doesn't matter, and you would just draw it as an arrow like this. So this would be the head and this would be the tail, and you have to connect this one onto it starting from the head and connect the tail to it like this. That's why they call it a head to tail method. And so then the net of that is going to be whatever connects this head to this tail, which is straight up. And they're all going to be of the same length because it's going to be all of the same magnitude. So when we draw this arrow going up, they're all going to be the same length and same magnitude, but now this is the molecular dipole moment. And dipole moment, um, I told you that definition earlier, that's a, a whole molecule, that's the separation of charge between this oxygen and these hydrogens. Um, and when there's a dipole moment, um, for the whole molecule, that means you have a polar molecule.
Um, so another example we could do is HCN. Like this. And we know that carbon is going to be more electron negative than hydrogen because it's closer to fluorine. So we would draw the arrow like this. And you can kind of remember it because this kind of looks like a plus sign. So the plus sign is going to be over the more positive atom. And then we also know that nitrogen is more electron negative than carbon because it's also closer to fluorine. So we would draw another arrow like this, going towards the more electron negative atom. So when we add these together using the vector sum um, head to tail method that I just showed you a little bit ago, this is the head, this is the tail. So then that would be this one and we would take this arrow and attach it where the head is with its tail. And it would be like this. So then the net, you would just have to add them together since they're going in the same direction. So the net would be that. So the net would be like this over the whole molecule to the right for HCN. And because there is a net molecular um, dipole moment, it is also polar. So now I'm going to show you a case where there's no net molecular dipole moment, and that's going to mean that it's nonpolar. Um, so we can do C2Cl4. Okay, so we know that chlorine is going to be closer to flor uh, fluorine than carbon, so all of the arrows are going to be pointing out like this. So if we take those arrows and do the vector sum notation, the head to tail method. We can start with this one right here, which is drawn down into the left. And then we'll take this one and attach it to it. So we have to start here at the head and attach the tail to it. So it's going up like this. And then we'll take this one and attach it to it. And then we take this one and attach it to it, head to, head to tail. And it goes back around. So it just circles back around. So that means there's no net dipole moment. So this means that this molecule is nonpolar. And you can see it's, it, I mean, it looks symmetric just by looking at it. I mean, you don't want to make any assumptions, but most symmetric molecules like this are going to be nonpolar because between the carbon carbon bond, there's no dipole because it's the same molecule. Um, I can do one last example between um, carbon and oxygen. With carbon dioxide, CO2. If 
this is a case where, because it's linear, um, the arrows point in opposite directions with equal magnitudes because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon being that it's closer to fluorine. So you draw the arrow like this. And they cancel each other out because they're going in opposite directions. So if we did the head to tail method, this would be this arrow. And we would have to draw this one onto this with the head, starting at the head, placing the tail on it, but it just goes back in the opposite direction. So they cancel each other out. And you can think of it as this is 180 degrees. So they cancel each other out. So that means this is also nonpolar because there's no net dipole moment. So there are a lot of other cases um, to show you that would be polar or nonpolar. Um, so I hope you have enjoyed this video and learned how to use the vector sum notation to figure out if a molecule is nonpolar or polar. Thank you.